But disinformation and misinformation doesn't get started on the debate stage. See, far too often it starts in one of the countless private Facebook groups that maybe you belong to that have popped up in the recent years. See, some of these groups have tens of thousands of members and virtually no oversight at all about what gets posted, which is why Kristen Severance found out they are ripe for conspiracy theories. So it's something that I had been on the lookout for. And last Oregon night, State Representative Julie Fahey knows about misinformation. So a couple months ago, I heard about um, a tactic of some folks online to create fake accounts to join, um, to really micro target neighborhood groups or smaller community groups on Facebook. A few weeks ago, when the wildfires were burning across the state, someone new joined Fahey's neighborhood Facebook group of a couple hundred people. His name was Mike, he lived in Eugene, and immediately he started posting wrong information about the fires. He said, quote, I saw a recording from the Oregon Attorney General who says, watch your neighborhood. Protesters are out lighting fires now. He said the news is covering it up. The account was fake and there were some red flags, like the punctuation mistakes and the fact that the Oregon AG is a woman. The neighbors reported Mike's account and it was taken down. During the wildfires, we saw several online rumors lead to real-world actions. People who refused to leave their homes during evacuation orders, citing rumors that Antifa was in the area. The Clackamas County Sheriff said that was not true. Armed men even set up illegal checkpoints to stop people in these areas. And sheriff's departments begged people to stop inundating 911 operators with false rumors about Antifa arrests. There were none. Representative Fahey points to another incident in July. A rumor started on Facebook that Antifa was coming to take down the cross at the New Hope Christian College in Eugene. In response, 100 people, many of them armed, showed up to protect the cross. Antifa members did not show up. It was a bogus threat. And the moderator of the Facebook group said that right before the incident, there was an influx of, of people joining the group. Facebook groups have been called hubs of misinformation and conspiracy theories. Facebook Nina Jankowitz, who studies disinformation at the Wilson Center, wrote an op-ed in Wired that Facebook groups are destroying America. She said in 2016, as Facebook pivoted from a digital public square to more of a digital living room, the popularity of private Facebook groups exploded. The private nature helps people feel more comfortable sharing information and believing what's posted in those groups. What I like to say is the most engaging content on Facebook is often the most enraging content. And the emotional stuff um, and these communities that are centered around that emotion, again, provide this uh, prime attack surface for anybody who wants to spread disinformation. And they don't even have to invest in advertising or bots and trolls in authentic accounts in order to spread it. Uh, they just drop it in the group. And again, Facebook primes them for engaging with that content and sharing it, and then it just takes on a life of its own. She said it's very easy for bad actors to infiltrate private groups and spread misinformation. The more we're aware and skeptical, the better. Check the source of the article, the date, and the author before you share it. Another good indication is if you find yourself getting really emotional in response to a piece of content, that should set off your spidey signals, uh, <laughs> spidey sense, I guess, for, for you to take a step back and start doing these checks of like, is this a real news outlet? Some other easy things you can do before or you share something, copy the text of an article, put it into the Facebook search or Google search to see where that information may have come from. Do a reverse image search, which is so easy to do. If you use Google Chrome, you just have to right click on the image. It's a lot of work for people. I mean, how much responsibility lies in the hands of the people who are using Facebook and how much is on Facebook itself to try and weed this stuff out for people? So it really depends on who you ask, but researchers want Facebook to be doing more. I mean, they are trying to fight misinformation. For example, Facebook took down 7 million posts between April and June uh, about fake COVID-19 information, and they flagged 98 million posts having to do with false information, COVID-19. So it just gives you an idea of how much content is really out there. But researchers say, no, you know, Facebook should be more transparent and they want more people, hire more people to look through these posts instead of, you know, relying on algorithms. 98 million. That's staggering. Kristen, thank you. You bet.